the students today we are going to start a new unit that is unit 5 ecology and environment so from this unit we are going to start with chapter 13 that is organisms and population part 1 nature consists of two complex interdependent mutually reactive and interrelated entities and that two complex are the organisms and the environment. The organisms can survive only in appropriate environments, interact with one another and are influenced by the whole complex of environmental factors. So that means the organisms in the environment interact with each other that is interact among themselves and also interact with its physical environment that is abiotic factors ecology is the study of interactions of organisms with each other and their environment Ecology exists at different levels. It exists at organisms level, population level, community level, biome level. Organisms, you know, it is referring to individual organisms. Population, a group of similar individuals living in a particular area, constitute population. Then community, it is referring to the group of uh, populations uh, living in a particular area in a given time. And biome is referring to large area on earth with similar climate, plants and animals. If you take an example of biome, you can take an example like desert, then grassland, tropical, forest, etc. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about ecology at organism and population level. Ecology at population level tries to understand how different organisms are adapted to the environment for their survival as well as for their reproduction. We assume that over a period of time, the organism had through natural selection, then evolve adaptation to optimize their survival in the habitat. We are going to discuss about the major abiotic factors or physical environments that influence or affect the living organisms in various ways. So let us go to measure abiotic factors. The first abiotic factor is temperature. Temperature is one important factor that affect organism in various way. There is a wide range of temperature and in that wide range of temperature we find various type of organisms. It ranges from sub zero levels in polar areas and high altitude to more than 50 degrees Celsius in tropical desert in summer. And in all these places, we find different types of organisms with special adaptation. In this wide range of temperature, most of the organisms preferred a range of temperature where the enzymes work well within their body. There are also unique habitats such as thermal spring and thermal vent where temperature exceeds 100 degrees Celsius and still some organisms exist. Those organisms that exist in this thermal spring and thermal vent has got a special protein that will help them 
to carry out the metabolic activity within their body for their survival. In case of an organism living in uh, polar areas where the temperature comes down to minus, the organism has a special protein called antifridge. These antifridge enzymes helped them to survive in this region. Now let us go to two important terms that are urethermal and stenothermal. What is urethermal? Urethermal is referring to the organisms that can tolerate wide range of temperature or that can survive in wide range of temperature. Examples are human, dog, cat, cow, etc. Another one is stenothermal. Stenothermal is referring to the organisms that can tolerate a narrow range of temperature or that can tolerate a small range of temperature. Example are penguin, crocodile, coral, few insects, few reptiles, etc. Now let us go to another abiotic factor that affect the organisms, that is water. The productivity as well as the distributions of plants is heavily dependent on water. Why it is dependent on water? Because water is raw material for photosynthesis. For aquatic organisms, aquatic organisms are those organisms that live in water. We might be thinking that there is no worrying for water since they live in water. But the quality of the water, like the chemicals contain, the pH, then the salt concentration in water uh, becomes important factors. The salt concentration is less than 5% in inland water, 30 to 35% in the sea, and more than 100% in some hypersaline lagoons. Urihaline are those organisms that can tolerate wide range of salt concentration in water. Examples are salmon and eels. Stenohaline are referring to the organisms that can tolerate narrow range of salt concentration in water. Example are goldfish and haddock fish. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.